laced wheels have been a part of motorcycling for a long time. They've changed over the years in order to accommodate new tire designs, heavier motorcycles, and increased handling demands. But their basic characteristics have stayed pretty much the same. Today's laced wheels are durable, lightweight, and resilient. And of course, they look great. But for some, laced wheels present a big challenge. If you find working with laced wheels a bit overwhelming, this program will help. It's all about wheel lacing and truing. After you've absorbed the information in this tape, you'll tackle those wheel lacing jobs with new confidence and proficiency. Harley-Davidson Motor Company proudly presents this PhD service training program. This program is designed to help you provide better service to your customers while you increase your service proficiency, professionalism, and profitability. What exactly is expected of a wheel assembly? Well, it should stay round during a shock. A wheel needs radial, lateral, and torsional strength. And it must be able to transmit acceleration and braking loads. And naturally, a wheel has to look good. Last but not least, the wheel design must ensure good tire retention. If you need more information on that subject, Remember, it's covered in PhD program 111. It's plain to see why proper wheel lacing and truing are so important. In order to properly lace a Harley-Davidson wheel, you'll need to understand Harley-Davidson hub designs. We're going to talk about several different hub designs. We can categorize these hubs into two basic types cast aluminum, and steel fabricated. There are important differences within each type. Let's begin with the cast aluminum hub. Notice the spoke holes on these two hubs. On the hub on the left, there is one row of spoke holes. This hub is used on 19-inch laced wheels. The design on the right is used on certain 21-inch laced wheels. On this hub, there are really two rows of spoke holes. You'll notice that one row has a smaller diameter on the hub than the other. This difference is important when it comes to lacing the wheel. More on that later. Now, let's look at the current steel fabricated hubs. The major difference between these two steel fabricated hubs is the position in which the spoke flanges are welded to the hub. In other words, the relative position these flanges have to each other. The flange hole arrangement, along with the rim you are using, determines the lacing pattern. Well, that's a close-up look at Harley-Davidson hubs. We'll talk more about differences between hubs when we begin lacing spoke wheels. And speaking of spokes, here are some things you should know. Harley-Davidson laced wheels have 40 spokes. Spokes are laced in a cross-four pattern, meaning each spoke crosses four other spokes on the same flange. On front wheels that use aluminum hubs, two different style spokes are used, a short head spoke and a long head spoke. The short head is an outside spoke. The long head is an inside spoke. Inside spokes need longer heads so they can clear the outer spokes. When it comes to reusing spokes, don't use one with thread damage. Don't try to straighten a bent spoke for reuse. It will never be the same. Spokes differ in length. So make sure you've got the right spoke for the wheel you're lacing. Well, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Now, let's lace a wheel. We're going to demonstrate lacing on the 16-inch wheel with steel fabricated hub and on the 19-inch wheel with cast aluminum hub. Because of the similarities among designs, there's no need to show lacing on every type of wheel. 
Also, we'll be using specially colored spokes for illustration purposes so you can distinguish the rows more clearly. Steel hubs are currently used on 16 and 21 inch wheels. We mentioned earlier that there are differences related to the flange arrangements. Before you begin to lace a wheel using a steel fabricated hub, you must determine which hub style you're working with. Here's how to check. Locate any outside hole on the bottom flange. Outside holes are closest to the edge of the flange. Next, draw an imaginary line straight across the hub to the top flange. Identify the first hole to the right of the line. Is it an inside or an outside hole? On this hub, the first hole to the right of the line is an outside hole. We'll call this one a B-style hub. On this hub, the first hole to the right of the line is an inside hole. We'll call this one an A-style hub. Why is it so important to identify which hub style you have? Well, the reason has to do with how you lace the two rows of inside spokes. When lacing a 16-inch wheel with an A-style hub, lace the inside spokes so that both rows point in the same direction. With a B-style hub, inside spoke rows point in opposite directions. They appear to cross each other. With a 21-inch wheel, the rule is reversed. A 21-inch wheel using an A-style hub has inside spokes running in opposite directions. With a B-style hub, the inside spokes on the 21-inch run in the same direction. On the hub we're going to lace, the first hole to the right of the center line is an outside hole. That means it's a B-style hub and the two rows of inside spokes go in opposite directions. One more word of caution. Before you lace any wheel, check the rim you intend to use for damage. Sometimes a loose spoke can enlarge a spoke hole, making it unable to hold a spoke nipple properly. Use your judgment to determine whether you should use the rim. Okay, let's lace the wheel. All 40 spokes have the same size head, so there's no separating necessary. Work with the top flange first. Insert 10 spokes into the inside holes, pushing the spokes through from the inside of the flange. Next, point the spokes in a clockwise direction. Check to make sure you have 10 spokes in inner spoke holes only. Place the rim over the hub, resting it on two by four blocks. This makes assembly easier since the rim is centered over the hub. Also, remember this rule. On 16 inch steel hubs, the brake disc side of the hub gets laced to the valve core side of the rim. In 1981, the bolt holes on both flanges became the same size. So with steel hubs made after 1981, you determine which side gets the brake disc after you've laced the wheel. But before 1981, the brake disc flange had bolt holes measuring 5 16 of an inch, and the sprocket flange had bolt holes measuring 7 16 of an inch. Check to see if you're working with an earlier hub. If you are, you've got to identify the brake side correctly before you begin lacing the hub. Again, the smaller diameter holes are on the brake disc flange, and that flange laces to the valve core side of the rim. Of course, there's an exception to every rule. The heritage front rim is placed in the opposite fashion. The valve core side is placed opposite the disc side. Choosing the correct hole for your first spoke may seem difficult, but we've got some tips to make the choice easier. Here's the first hint. As you look down the rim, you'll see that each hole favors one side of the rim. Spokes on the right flange lace to the holes on the right half of the rim. Spokes on the left flange lace to the left half of the rim. After narrowing the choice down, put spoke nipples through the two rim holes. 
the direction of the spoke nipple should help you make the final choice. When you choose the hole that lines up with your first spoke, make the spoke reach for the nipple. Secure the spoke loosely with the spoke nipple. Once you've got the first spoke hole figured out, the rest of the row is easy. Just skip three holes between each spoke. Lace the entire row, fastening each spoke nipple loosely by hand. When you finish, check to make sure all ten spokes are in and that the skip three pattern is consistent. Now, on the same flange, insert an outer spoke and point it in a counterclockwise direction until it crosses over four inner spokes. With a spoke in this position, there is only one hole in the top half of the rim that will accept it. Lace the entire row in the same manner, pointing each spoke counterclockwise and crossing four inner spokes. Secure each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple. After you've installed the 20 spokes on the top flange, turn the wheel assembly over. Insert a spoke in an inner hole. At this time, you've got to decide which way the row should point, clockwise or counterclockwise. If we refer to our chart, we see that for our B-style hub, the inner spokes go in opposite directions. To achieve this pattern, point the row of inner spokes on this flange in a clockwise direction. Once you have the first spoke hole assigned for that row, follow the same pattern and lace the rest of the inner row, securing each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple. Double check your work. Finally, lace the remaining outer row one spoke at a time. As with the other rows, secure each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple. Now, before you go to the truing stand, you can finger tighten all the spoke nipples until two to four threads are showing. We've completed the lacing procedure for a 16-inch wheel with the B-style steel hub. But what about an A-style steel hub? To lace the first two rows, follow the exact procedure for a 16-inch B-style hub. But when you begin the third row, you'll point the 10 inner spokes in a counterclockwise direction. Remember, we determine this because the first hole to the right of the center line is an inner hole. The final outer row, then, will point in a clockwise direction. Now, let's lace the 19-inch wheel. The 19-inch wheel uses the aluminum hub with one row of spoke holes which are all the same distance from the center of the hub. Start by separating the spokes. You should have 20 short head and 20 long head spokes. Again, we'll be using our painted spokes for this demonstration. Here's the key to lacing the 19 inch wheel correctly. Insert an outer short head spoke in any hole in the bottom flange. Next, insert an inner long head spoke immediately to the left of the outer spoke. Turn the outer spoke clockwise and the inner spoke counterclockwise, crossing it over the outer spoke. Now, find the hole directly above these spokes on the upper flange. That hole gets a long head inner spoke. This is the most important step in lacing the 19-inch wheel, because if it's done incorrectly, the entire procedure will be wrong. Your next step is to insert the remaining 37 spokes, being careful to alternate long and short heads. Complete one flange, then turn the hub over and finish the other flange. At this time, we can compare these beginning steps to the beginning steps in lacing the 21-inch aluminum hub. The difference lies in the method for choosing inside and outside spokes. Remember, the flange hole arrangement is different between the 19 and 21-inch aluminum hubs. The 21-inch is the hub with the two rows of holes. On the 21-inch hub, 
short head outer spokes go in the roll with the larger diameter. These holes are the outer holes. Long head inner spokes are inserted into the row with the smaller diameter, the inner holes. Put all of the spokes in on both flanges. Then complete the following steps to lace a 19 or 21 inch aluminum hub wheel. No matter which of the two hubs you are lacing, double check your work by pushing up on the spokes and verifying the long and short pattern. Now bind up the top flange spokes into two groups of 10. Handlebar grips work well. On the bottom flange, point all outer short head spokes in a clockwise direction and all inner long head spokes in a counterclockwise direction. Turn each spoke as far as it will go in the correct direction. Each spoke will cross four others on the same flange. It is very important that all inside spokes lay on top of all outside spokes before you continue. Otherwise, you won't be able to lace the wheel properly. Now, get the rim in position. The core hole on the 19-inch rim is centered, so you don't have to worry about choosing the correct relationship between rim and hub. Place the hub into the rim, being careful not to upset the spoke arrangement on the bottom flange. Next, unbind the spokes in the top flange and arrange them in a starburst pattern. Take care not to allow the outside spokes to fall inside the rim because they'll get tangled and you may have to undo much of your work. At this time, straighten out any spokes that were accidentally bumped or moved on the bottom flange. Now, you are ready to lace the first row. On the bottom flange, Work with the bottom row of outside short head spokes first. Choose a beginning spoke and four rim holes in the correct area. Use spoke nipples to accentuate the direction of the rim holes. Locate a hole pointing down and toward the bottom row of spokes. You will see that only one of the four holes is positioned correctly for an outside spoke on that flange. Make sure the spoke must reach for the hole Secure the spoke with a spoke nipple loosely by hand. After you lace the first spoke, the rest is easy. Simply skip three holes, then lace the next spoke from that row in the fourth hole. Follow this pattern and complete the bottom row, securing each spoke with a spoke nipple. When you've completed the row, double check for three empty holes between all spokes. Now, for the top row on the bottom flange, the inner spokes with the long heads. You've got three holes to choose from for your first spoke. Use spoke nipples for guidance. But more importantly, remember that each inside spoke crosses four outside spokes before it finds its appropriate spoke hole. You'll see this when you lace the 11th spoke, which is the first spoke in the second row. Again, once you've found the appropriate spoke hole, follow the pattern for the rest of the spokes in that row. Secure each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple. And don't forget to double check your work. Okay, the bottom flange is done. Now for the top flange. Point the inside long head spokes in a clockwise direction and the outside short head spokes in a counterclockwise direction. Keep moving the spokes in their respective directions until they slip inside the edge of the rim. Choose a long head spoke in the inside row. Using the methods we've discussed, find the correct hole. Lace the spokes in that row. As you do so, don't knock any outer short head spokes under the inner spokes, or they'll be trapped underneath the inner row. Even though the bottom flange is laced, you will notice that there are three rim holes between each spoke in the row you are lacing. Secure each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple and check your work. Then lace the final row of outside short head spokes on the top flange in the remaining spoke holes. Secure each spoke loosely with a spoke nipple. Once you have all rows in, Hand tighten all spokes until two to four threads are showing on the spokes. To keep your place, 
start and stop at the valve core hole. Let's review some important facts. Harley-Davidson motorcycles currently use several different laced hubs. There's the steel fabricated hub, A and B style, used on 16 and 21 inch wheels, the cast aluminum hub used on the 21 inch wheel, and the cast aluminum hub used on the 19 inch wheel. The flange arrangement, along with the rim you are using, determines the lacing pattern. Harley-Davidson laced wheels have 40 spokes and a cross four pattern. Front wheels with cast aluminum hubs use spokes with two different head lengths, short-headed for outside spokes, long-headed for inside spokes. Using spoke nipples can help you determine the correct rim holes. On 16 and 21 inch steel fabricated hubs, all spokes on the left flange lace to the left half of the rim. All spokes on the right flange lace to the right half of the rim. No matter what the lacing pattern, when a wheel is laced correctly, 20 spokes will point clockwise and 20 counterclockwise as you view the wheel from either side. These Harley-Davidson employees true laced wheels 40 hours a week at the factory in York, and they make it look pretty easy. But if you don't true wheels 40 hours a week, 40 spokes can look pretty scary. Well, hang in there, because with a little help, you can bring those 40 spokes back into perspective. If you check your service manual under truing and lacing wheels, you'll find a method which concentrates on four groups of four spokes. This method works fine. It's been used for years, and you may prefer this way. But we're going to show you another method which works equally well and which may save you time and effort. Earlier, we hand tightened all spokes an equal amount. This will simplify our job because the wheel is already close to being true. All we need to do is snug the spokes and make some minor adjustments. At this time, make sure all spoke heads are properly seated in the hub flange holes and check for this throughout the truing process. Be especially careful with aluminum hubs. Also, before you true the wheel radially and laterally, you must consider the rim to hub dimension. That is, the relative position that the rim and hub have to each other. The measuring procedure differs slightly between rim styles. This 16 inch wheel has what we call a formed steel rim. You'll measure to this surface. With the wheel in a truing stand, place a straight edge across the hub brake disc flange. Using a dial caliper, measure from the straight edge to the outer bead retention wall of the rim at the point where the straight edge crosses. Then measure the thickness of the straight edge and subtract that thickness from your original measurement. This will give you the rim to hub dimension. It is the distance from the brake disc flange surface to the outer bead retention wall. This 21 inch rim is a boxed flange formed steel rim. In this case, it's most accurate to measure from the outside surface of the rim to the brake disc flange of the hub. Again, measure with the dial caliper and subtract the thickness of the straight edge to get the correct figure. Remember, it's very important to maintain the correct rim to hub dimension for the motorcycle you are working on. This specification is necessary for proper vehicle alignment. Just make sure you identify the rim configuration first for proper measurement. Attached to your PhD workbook, you'll find a chart giving rim to hub dimension specifications. Now, if the measurement does not fall within the correct spec, here's how to correct it. Determine which direction the rim must move. For example, let's say the rim needs to move toward the brake disc flange. In that case, Loosen all of the spokes on the side opposite the brake disc flange an equal amount of flats. Then tighten all of the spokes on the same side as the brake disc flange an equal amount of flats. This will move the rim closer to the brake disc flange. 
To move the rim away from the brake disc flange, loosen the spokes on the brake disc side and tighten the spokes on the opposite side. Remember, whether tightening or loosening spokes, turn each an equal amount. Okay, let's true the wheel. Starting at the valve core hole, turn each spoke one half turn or two flats with a spoke wrench. Tighten one spoke on one side of the rim, then tighten one spoke on the other side. Don't attempt to tighten all 20 on the left and then all 20 on the right. That could affect rim to hub dimension. Repeat the process, starting and stopping at the valve core hole each time until all the spokes have some tension. The spoke nipples will turn quite easily at this point. If a particular spoke nipple is noticeably more difficult to turn, something is wrong. Loosen the opposing spokes before attempting to turn the stiff spoke. If you force a spoke, you'll strip the threads or round off the flats on the spoke nipple. Once you get some tension on the spokes, a turn of one flat is a significant adjustment. With the spokes taut, check for radial runout. Simply put, radial runout is the amount of up and down movement of the rim as it spins past a fixed point. Of course, a well-laced wheel won't be this exaggerated. But if you find excessive radial runout, here's the procedure. Place a dial indicator on the rim and give the wheel a spin. On this wheel, there is an area of the rim which obviously protrudes out each time it passes the dial indicator. The rim is not concentric with the hub. Your instincts will tell you that you need to tighten spokes on the side of the high spot to pull the area in. But remember, it is necessary to loosen spokes on the opposite side of the rim an equal amount first before you tighten those on the same side. Find the center of the high spot. Next, locate a group of four spokes directly across the rim or 180 degrees from the high spot. Loosen each of the four spokes the same amount, one or two turns. Now, return to the high area of the rim and tighten the group of four spokes around that spot the same amount, one or two turns each. This will move the section of the rim in towards the hub. Check the radial runout again to see if it is within specifications. If not, repeat the procedure until the wheel is radially trued. At this time, recheck your rim to hub dimension to make sure it's still within specs. After you have the wheel trued radially, check it for lateral runout. Basically, lateral runout is the amount of side to side movement of the rim past a fixed point. Position the dial indicator on the outer bead retention wall of the rim and give the wheel a spin. If you find an area that is closer to your dial indicator than the rest of the rim, find the center of that area. Then, within a four spoke grouping, loosen the two spokes that lace to the same side of the rim in that area. Tighten the spokes on the opposite side of the rim in the area of the high spot. Whether you're loosening or tightening spokes, remember to turn each spoke the same amount. After your corrections, check the wheel again for lateral truing. Repeat the tweaking process if you find another spot which is not within specifications until the wheel is trued laterally and radially. And once again, make sure the rim to hub dimension is still within specifications. Also, if any spoke protrudes through the end of the spoke nipple, grind it off flush. Otherwise, it may poke a hole in the rim band and inner tube. To make sure you haven't missed a spoke, use the sound check method. Check for equal pitch from every spoke. And remember, spoke tightness must be checked at 500 miles. When it comes to beauty and style, Nothing makes a statement like a pair of shiny spoke wheels, and they will continue to be a part of motorcycling for years to come. We hope you agree that lacing and truing a spoke wheel isn't such a big deal after all, now that you've got those wheels in the palm of your hand.